Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today what we're going to do is bed a rifle stock. Um, this is actually a Remington 700 243 and when I first got the rifle I was shooting uh, a shot great. Uh, three quarter inch groups all day long with factory ammo. Uh, guaranteed MOA with factory ammo. I started getting into hand loads and I started tightening up the groups but I'd always see a flyer here and there. After about 150 rounds through the gun, I think I have 300 rounds, 320 rounds total through the gun already. About 150 rounds in, I decided I was going to swap the stock. This has kind of been my project gun for the last couple of years. My wife likes to shoot it because it's light recoiling. Uh, the 243 um, caliber is a well-rounded bullet. You can get something as small as 40, 45 grains all the way up to something as heavy as 115 grains now. So they're a well-rounded rifle. You can use them for small game, squirrel, all the way up to even deer if you want. But what we like to do is shoot long range and the 243 caliber is pretty effective for that. A lot of bullet uh, manufacturers make bullets that are that are suited for this to get you out to a thousand yards and uh, it's flat shooting. So I really like the gun but back to the story the, the accuracy started falling apart. Um, I, I took the original stock, that's where I started with, I took the original stock off thinking that maybe that was the issue and I purchased a Manners, uh, it's like a Monte Carlo style stock, it's kind of in between uh, a hunting style stock with a maybe a precision rifle stock, it doesn't have an adjustable comb, it's just a straight comb in the back, but it's got oversized um, palm swell, it's got a big wide forend so you can ride bags and it's fairly lightweight stock so it's a good um, crossover type thing. Um, accuracy after I swapped the stock was about six to eight inch group at a hundred yards so absolutely terrible. Um, I basically went through the whole thing. I, I had a gunsmith do the bottom metal so I could use box magazines and uh, I went through made sure all my nuts and bolts are tight. I bed the, uh, the scope base. I tried multiple different scopes, multiple different bases thinking that I was getting movement in the rifle somewhere, so that was the only reason why um, the accuracy fell apart. Well, come to find out, after I took the action in the barrel out of the stock, you can actually see wear marks on the bottom of the stock itself, where the where the uh, action and barrel is sliding against the pillars. So it's wearing on those points. So obviously, I'm getting some movement somewhere along the line. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through step by step how to bed an action. Uh, I'm not a professional gunsmith, I'm an amateur, uh, but I figure the best way to learn is to do it yourself. There's lots of videos, um, and if you don't feel comfortable doing something like this, you can always have a gunsmith do it. My problem is I don't have any local gunsmiths. I don't think there's a gunsmith in the state that even bids actions. So, unless I send it away, tie the gun up for three, four, five, even six months, uh, this is going to be the best way I'm going to do it. So, I picked up some popular stuff. Uh, it's called Marine Tex. There's a bunch of different stuff that works good like Brunel's has the Acra Glass. Um, they, uh, the Devcon is pretty popular. The, the guy I talked to, he's local, he's a gunsmith, but he does more like uh, metal type work, um, inletting on a mill, that type of stuff. He doesn't really deal with the bedding aspect, but he told me he has a lot of friends that shoot bench rest and they swear by Marine Tex for the recoil lug area. So you can see how big that is. Um, it's probably made, most people that are going to drop their rifle into an aftermarket stock like this would probably rebarrel and they'd have an uh, oversized recoil lug installed on their rifle. Uh, mine's just a factory setup, factory barrel, factory action with an aftermarket stock. So I'm going to have to fill this in somehow. So that's basically what the bedding is going to do. What I'm going to try to do um, I'm going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to scuff this up just to get a good contact surface for the for the epoxy to set and I'm going to do the same here in the tang. Alright, we just finished sanded. I'm going to take a uh, a rag of some sort. You can use like a nail polish remover or even alcohol and uh, just get some of this dust and stuff out of here and basically prep the surface. Doing this, most of the work is to prep. It's kind of like painting a car or something. You're going to have to, uh, the painting part is easy. The prep part is what has to be done properly. Otherwise you're going to have issues. So take your time with your prep work and uh, you'll have good results. Alright, we knocked out the rear pin. Uh, don't forget about your safety spring. You need that. So make sure you put your hand underneath it and you catch it. And then I got the other safety 
safety is just sitting there. Now we just got to pop out this front one. The Remington uh, actions are pretty easy to work on. Actually, this one goes this way. One goes one way, the other goes the other. That's it, just the two little pins hold your hanger and hold your trigger, so that's easy. Now let's just spin this up. And we need this little piece here. That's the safety uh, safety selector. So let's just put this crap somewhere else with a magnet so we don't lose it. Now we can put that off to the side. Now the barrel is basically finished. I just got to get this one last pin out of here. And then we'll start prepping it for paint or for the uh, epoxy. And that's basically it. Now our barrel is clean. A couple things you're going to need for this, or at least to make it easy. You don't need it, I guess, but it makes things a lot easier. Uh, let me pull these up. What I got is some, some modeling clay, different colors, so I don't think you need it. And what I'm going to do with the modeling clay is I'm going to fill all these holes. That way, the compound doesn't get into there and have any issues. Um, a couple tools you're going to need, masking tape. Or painter's tape would come in handy. Um, I'm going to use shoe polish as a release agent. Uh, you can also use wax. You want to use like a paste style wax, maybe like a carnauba. A lot of people use Johnson's uh, Johnson's wax. I guess it's like a floor wax, and a lot of people swear by that. You can get that at any local uh, hardware store, Ace Hardware, or something like that. You can get Johnson's wax. I just have shoe polish. I've used it before, and it seems to work pretty good for me. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use. So. You're going to need wax, painter's tape, obviously a few punches. This putty will make things a lot easier. And I got some razor blades. And there will probably be a few other little things here and there that, that you're going to want. Like Q-tips or obviously something to mix the, the epoxy with. Um, so what we're going to do now is basically just... I'm going to fill in these holes. So what I'm doing is just breaking off little strips and it's easier to work. I was trying to mold the whole thing and soften it up a little bit. I'm in the basement here so it's kind of cold so the putty stays hard. So if you break it into little pieces it works out a little better. And I'm just going to take this and fill these holes. And what's nice is you can actually take your finger and stick your finger on the back side and you can make sure that it's flush. So that's what I'm going to do. And if you got extra, take your little razor blade and you can just run this along the top and clean up any extra that you have. And what I want to try to do is I want to try to get all the little wrinkles out of it. I want this to actually come out clean. Or I'm going to try to make it come out clean. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm just going to cut along the edge. Maybe you guys can see it here. And then just take this and clean this up a little bit. So I have nice clean lines. Alright, so I got all the, the uh, open holes filled in, you can see here, with the putty. One last hole that might get overlooked that is very important is this relief valve here for uh, Remington Savage make it so if you have any sort of explosion uh, overcharge in the chamber the excess excess gas has a place to escape and that's what this little side hole is and that side hole runs right into your chamber area and if you don't have the ability to pull your barrel from your action and you get something inside of there 
you're going to be out of luck and you're going to have to send this probably away. So make sure you fill that hole because the uh, bedding cow pound could ride up the sides and get caught in that hole and worse come to worse get inside the chamber and then you're not going to be able to manipulate the bolt because the lugs are going to be rubbing against that uh, putty that you put in there that hardens to steel so make sure and basically like I did for the rest of the barrel all I did was roll it in my hands and then uh, just fill the hole and break it off is what I've been doing and then I take a, uh, you can take a razor blade and just clean up the extra. And then it just leaves a nice clean, a nice clean fill in mark there. All right, we're almost to the point where we're going to apply the, uh, the shoe polish as a release agent. But one important part I want to, uh, emphasize on is the recoil lug area. The back of the recoil lug sits on the back here. So when the gun recoils the barrel is going to want to go back. So you want to make sure that the recoil lug is making solid contact with the back of the recoil lug cut. The front is where all the gap is and where all the air is. That The front is where what we're going to need to fill in. So when you're messing with the recoil lug area here what you want to do is put tape on the sides you want tape on the sides of the recoil lug the bottom and the opposite side and you want to leave the back bare from tape and just put a little bit of uh, painters tape on the front so I'm gonna put tape on three sides leave the back with no tape on it that way I have a solid contact up against the, the recoil lug cutout in the stock itself. I don't want any play. That's where the movement's going to come from. So the gun's going to recoil. It's going to come back. And I want that solid. What I'm going to do is cut just to cut a piece of tape on this cardboard. And then I'm going to take a bottle cap from anything. And I basically am going to try to form the round shape of the barrel. It's not going to be perfect. It's probably not going to work. But... I'm just going to trace this bottle cap and that should give me some sort of round dimension I would assume. It's not pretty but it'll do. So I just basically traced the bottle cap and we're going to put this on the front of the recoil lug area. Not quite enough, but Here's what we got. So we got the front taped off, the sides, and then the back is bare. And make sure you add release agent to your tape too. Alright, this is uh, obviously the shoe polish here. I'm just going to use a little swab and I'm going to run it all over this. And you want to be uh, you don't want to be conservative with this stuff. You want it everywhere. The last thing you want is your action to get stuck. Couple Q-tips. I'm going to take this one. Make sure you get these threads good. I'm 
I'm going to do the screws last. Make sure you don't forget about your bottom metal. Anything that could come in contact. Q-tip on this one. Make sure you get these holes good. The last thing I'm going to do just to make clean up a little easier is I'm going to tape off some of this stock. I really don't want to uh, spend a whole bunch of time cleaning this up. So I'm just going to take masking tape and I'm going to tape off these edges and that will make clean up a whole lot easier. Alright our tape job is finished. This stuff here looks like it's some pretty serious stuff. There's all kinds of warnings on it, so rubber gloves is a good idea. From what I read here, it says uh, five parts epoxy to one part the hardener. So that's what we're going to go with. I'm going to mix this whole jar up. All right. Basically, all we're going to do is just pour this into this little recoil lug area. And you want to try to keep the air bubbles out. Because the air bubbles will make it fragile. So kind of work it into that recoil lug area. I just switched up my pick. Instead of using that other thing, I'm going to try a screwdriver. At least I can grab a little bit of this and add it where I need it. I'm going to add a little bit right here. Alright, I just went back over this. I added some more wax or some uh, shoe polish to it. One thing that is important that I remembered after I did this was make sure you take a cotton swab and get inside of the Remington or whatever your uh, your brand rifle is going to be that you're going to inlet. Same with the, uh, the serial number because this stuff will get caught in all of that stuff. And if it's in there, it's not going to be able to come back out. So just load it up. And uh, this stuff will come off easy anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. All right, let's give her hell. Here we go. A lot easier with two people. Alright, that's about as tight as I'm gonna go. Now you can see we got some uh, some stuff coming off the sides. Let's grab some of these here and we can clean this up. So I just finished up cleaning up the uh, the edges. It was overflowing, so it's still gooey and kind of soft. So I cleaned it up. I basically uh, put the putty in. I set the uh, the action in, and then I tightened the bolts just barely snug enough. Um, I don't want to go too tight because it's going to make all the the epoxy pour out the sides. Basically, the idea behind the bolts was to make sure that the action bolts are lined up correctly when it makes its mold so 
I see some other people use tape. They'll tape over the top. I'm sure you could do that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. If I need to clean up any edges on the interior, I can just use a little Dremel or something like that. And uh, I think it, it seems like it's got pretty consistent contact all the way around it. So I'm hoping that tomorrow when we pull this apart, um, it comes apart easy and that uh, we got a nice clean mold that's basically custom fit to this action. So we'll continue this video tomorrow after this dries. I'm going to let it dry for, uh, I don't know, probably be around the same time tomorrow we get started, about 12, 15 hours. And it uh, should be good and dry by then. So we'll continue this tomorrow. All right, guys, it's been uh, 26 hours. Uh, the the epoxy's had plenty of time to set. It said 24 hours was um, for its ultimate strength, so I'm I'm a little past that. Uh, I actually, as you can see, I pulled the barrel and the action out, but I wanted to show you guys what the bedding job looked like. Um, it's pretty clean, smooth. I still got a little bit of tape in there. I got to get out, and I took fingernail polish and I actually just painted it because it was white. Um, my only issue is I'm not sure if I went too far up here with the epoxy. Uh, you can see the recoil lugs here. Typically people go about an inch past it. Um, so I may have to clean this out a little bit. Uh, I do have a 26 inch barrel on the rifle so depending on uh, if it affects my harmonics in the barrel I may just leave it. So I'm going to take it out and shoot it first. Uh, the rear tang kind of come out like crap. You can see it chipped a little bit. But it does have a shelf on it and stuff so what I did was I um, I had epoxy basically flowing into the channel of the magazine and stuff. And I had the bottom metal in and then I had to putty in the barrel. So it didn't have anywhere to go. So it just basically built a layer, almost closed this off. So I took a Dremel uh, wheel, basically this here, and I just sanded around the edge here and cleaned it up. And then I did the same back here and I tried to make it look somewhat smooth. I may go back in by hand and do it a little more just to sand it down. My only issue was uh, I had the epoxy come up on the on the rails here on the sides. Even though I taped it, the, the epoxy went underneath the tape and it hardened on the exterior. So when I go to take it off, it was actually taking the, the paint off of the the uh, stock itself. So my wife had some uh, same similar color green nail polish. So I basically just touched up the trim down here on the edges. You can see the different color there, slight different color and uh, I sanded down the top edge and got rid of that white and then uh, you can see a little bit back here but uh, other than that I think it came out pretty good the only thing I got left to do I gotta get that tape out and that should give me a little more clearance on the recoil lug because it's kinda tight going in and out and make sure everything fits I gotta do the prep on the barrel or at least clean up the barrel and the bottom metal I got a little bit of crap here and there but uh, not a big deal so uh, I was going to show you me taking the barrel apart, actually how it released with the release agent, it, it worked pretty slick. What I did was I took the bottom metal, the bottom metal was sitting in the bottom, I uh, broke the screws free and then I took a, a, a little mallet and I tapped the side of this which broke this free and then I had my screws out, the only thing that was left was the action in the barrel. So what I did, it's probably not right, but I took my screws and I screwed them back in without the, the bottom metal, back into the action itself, in the front and the back, and I threaded them as far as I could just to leave me a little bit of a head. And then I took the uh, rubber mallet and I tapped the, the screws on the bottom. I'd go one side and then the other side, one side, and I just kind of worked it, worked its way out, and about three or four hits and it freed itself. And uh, the, the barrel, uh, pulled out with no issue so uh, it's the first time doing it so I think it come out fairly good uh, it basically only serves one purpose and that's to uh, make sure you don't get any movement in the uh, receiver or barrel area so um, I ran a barrel or a uh, bill underneath the channel with the action in it last night just to make sure I had clearance because I wanted to make sure that the epoxy didn't go too far or I had anything hanging up and I had uh, the barrel was still free floated no problem I may take uh, like a chisel or something or a Dremel with a cutoff wheel and maybe cut this back a little bit and then uh, just clean this up. So I'm just going to drill these out and clean these up and uh, that should be about it. So if any of you guys are looking to do uh, a bed job, uh, check out Marine Techs. This stuff's pretty awesome. That's what I'll use from now on.